What's good guys? It's Joseph and today we're going to be we're going to be doing a cinematic shake um type of video. Um let's see. What this effect is going to do, it's going to basically make your cinematics look a little bit more interesting and dynamic as opposed to just having like a straight shot. And I, I wouldn't only use this for a map cinematic, but you could use uh, an edited version of this for character cinematics because you don't obviously don't want it to be that heavy. And so you're going to have to use Sapphire Shake for this because that's how I'm going to do it. But if you can, if you have a different plugin or if you have a different way to get around it, obviously you can use that if you use like similar settings. So I got my clip in here. It's not synced up to anything. This is actually a different clip than what I'm going to have in the preview um, because I don't have that cinematic anymore, but this is basically the same thing that we're going to be doing that I did. I do this with every single one of my cinematics. So I'm going to go ahead and make a adjustment layer, go to animation. Actually, well, what I would do, I go to apply animation preset or recent animation presets. I got a whole bunch of them in there. It's my cinematic shake, but I'm going to go ahead and do it from scratch and do S underscore shake just so I can do it from scratch because it's how it's going to look like on your computer. And if you see, it shakes it a lot and that's not what we want. Um, leave your amplitude at one. We're going to change the frequency to around one. And obviously you can use your own settings for this. Um, but if you keep them close to mine, you're going to get the same look that I do. 0.8 for the phase shift and then... 0.8 for the phase shift, 0.9 for Z distance. It's really, it doesn't make too much of a difference, but that's what I use for mine. Um, I also have motion blur checked. You, it, I think, I think it looks really cool once you have it checked. Um, but it obviously increases your render time, and uh, it's up to you whether you want to keep it like that or not. And then those are the rest of the settings up there are good. You want to go into X shake. And under that, you're going to want to change this. Because like if you see right now, this is like a really crazy shake. But it looks like something you'd see out of a movie, you know, like like a, like a bomb just exploded or something. So we don't want that to happen. You can use this for whatever you want if you want a shake that big. But for X shake, we're going to change our X rand, random amplitude, I think to 72 70 whatever um and then we're going to leave that uh frequency at one zero point five zero so everything else there is good but let's go ahead and go over into the y um we're going to actually bump up this or actually no no, no. we're going to leave this we're going to move this down to 36 there you go yep I'm trying to remember all these settings so we're going to move that down to 36 everything else in there should be fine and then we're going to go into Z shake and if you want to, you can mess with these, but I actually don't mess with these at all. And so now if you see, we get just like a little, we get, we get a shake and if you preview it, you'll see it. You can barely see it. And if you shut this off, it just moves linearly over there. But if you turn this on, it gives you a nice shake, like a camera shake, you know, as the camera's moving through the world and I know this is a really quick one, but this is something that you can do, small, a small thing you can do to enhance your cinematics. Obviously, you can do this on a character cinematic where a character is running through the scene, but uh, it may not look the way you want it. You might want to change the settings if you want to use it on that, uh, but definitely, I would definitely recommend putting them on the cinematic because it makes it look a lot better, um, in my opinion, uh, but depends on the style of edit you're going for, but uh, you know, if you learned something, if it's helped you out, if you already used this method you know i'd love to see your edits um i always look at edits you guys link down to me i try to you know leave a comment or like on them check out your channel um but if you have any questions my dms are open on twitter um i'm open to you know help you one-on-one -on -one if you have any questions or anything like that i try to i read all my comments i don't respond to every single one i respond to a few of them and a handful of them but other than that hope you guys have a great rest of the day leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you want to i'm out peace